there's so many times where I write beyond my current capability. I shoot way further than I can actually make and then I have to make up the difference. Like by the time tour rolls around, I have to be able to play this fucking thing. You, you do have to tell yourself the kind of ridiculous stuff. Like if you, if you want to create something good or do something cool, you know, you gotta like dream big. My first instrument that I started on was violin. My mom made me pick that up at, at age three and kind of forced me to play it my whole life. And I really just hated it, you know, because it was just a couple of hours a day. As a kid, it's like most of your life, it feels like. After doing that till I was 10 years old, my dad just brought out a, a guitar one day. I had no idea that he even played. My dad would go and play with his band and occasionally he'd take me and let me just play with them. And I always just wanted to like solo over whatever they were doing. My upbringing was very dad rock, dad guitar, you know, with the boomer bends and everything. That's where I learned that. That was like one of the first things I ever learned. Sixth grade, my friend group's parents were like asking us what we each wanted to be when we grew up. And I said, I want to be a rock star. And of course, you know, everyone like rolled their eyes or something stupid, you know. I was just dead ass serious though. I had this idea in my head that I wanted to be the best guitar player on earth. So, you know, I, I think I had watched School of Rock because that came out around then and Pick of Destiny. And, you know, like just the Jack Black movies were like really influential. <laughs> um, and then I watched Crossroads with Steve, of course, and just the idea of like selling your soul to the devil or whatever, and then like you were the best. I just thought that was so cool. From like age 10 to like 13, I just practiced with the intention of becoming the best guitar player in the world. <laughs> I wanted to start my own bands and, and in middle school, everyone, at first they were into Green Day and then they got super into like the emo stuff with like Chiodos and from first to last and, and that whole scene thing. And so we, we all wanted to start bands like that. So we, so we did that at first. We were doing like covers of those songs at church lock-ins. That was like one of the first times I ever played for like a group of my peers. Then I joined like a worship thing for like a youth group. And you know, I don't give a shit about any of that, but I just wanted to play. And it was like an opportunity for me to like play every weekend. Eventually, you know, we started Polyphia in like high school. And, you know, it started out death metal because that's what we were really into at the time. And then it just eventually got less blast BD and more groove oriented, and then kind of evolved to what it is today. I think we've been playing Ernie Ball strings since we were teenagers, like going to Guitar Center and buying strings, I remember picking like the cobalt and being like, that's the fucking one I want because it's, you know, at the time we were really wanting to gent and that just takes so much like, you, you pick the shit really hard and then the cobalts were like strong enough to like deal with it without like going dead in a, you know, with as much as we were practicing the next day. I remember being in high school and just like the Ernie Bolts were the superior one that I'd spent money on. Yeah, it was like impassion and transcend, I think, from just like the super early days. I remember that 
got us, you know, our first endorsement with Ernie Ball. You know, we were playing Music Man back then, and I, I remember just thinking like, holy shit, we made it. We're endorsed by Ernie Ball Music Man. And it was just the coolest fucking thing to be able to like customize a guitar, you know? I'd say we kind of know who we are now, at least musically for what we're doing right now. So that's, that's a nice thing to not throw something at the wall and see what sticks. You know, but that's also the fun part about creating is maybe on the next record, we'll just want to fucking start from ground zero and just do something completely different. So we'll see. I think that our not sticking to the same sound through each record has definitely helped us grow and it's been a lot of finding out who we are as artists and a lot of kind of weeding out the naysayers of the fan base through doing that we've found the people that have stuck through each era you know and, and those are the diehards that really like keep us going you know so it's it's a nice thing to be able to journey through those different styles. I think the most important thing as a young player or, or musician or composer, or producer or anything, creator, is to find your voice, you know, to find your style. And, and the way that you do that is you learn your favorite things, you learn your favorite styles, and it, it helps to find a very to, to be into a lot of things so that you can pinpoint contrasting stuff because eventually you get good at all these different things that you like, you know, stylistically, they're going to make their way into original playing. And then you might have an original voice. We've been lucky that we've been able to follow or participate in certain trends throughout the years without it feeling, you know, like, oh, we're just like following that trend just like everybody else because our thing is so far detached. Like if we're taking influence from whatever is going on in the pop world or, the, or, or in the hip hop world, we're not even in that world. So when we take influence from those trends that are happening there, like and apply it to our style, our voice is so f drastically different than what else is happening over here that it, you can't even make the comparison. Yeah, I'd say we've been lucky in that regard. And, and that's really the thing that you wanna do is find super contrasting influences. Guitar playing to me is more of a means to an end. The end being the creation of music. The guitar is a tool to execute my ideas and bring them to life. If I was good at any other instrument, I'd be playing that instrument, but I'm only good at guitar. So, you know, that's the one that I use. It's more of a vehicle than anything for, for just the expression. I just have to make stuff, you know, I, I make too much stuff to like fit under one project, you know, even though it takes us four years to put out a record. There's just so much music that I make and it, I don't really care about progressing 
the instrument or like pushing the boundaries of like what it's possible to do. It's that that's more of a byproduct that happens from me just wanting to make stuff and trying to figure out how it's going to work and you know what's possible. When it comes to collaborating with people outside of the band, like I have so many ideas that I, I want to do, so many things I want to make and it's just a nice thing to be able to get in a room with someone you've never even met before. Making music is such an intimate thing and you really have to be somewhat vulnerable um, to kind of open up to like let it come out, you know, with someone you just met and sometimes the vibe is really sick and sometimes it's not and it's kind of an awkward session and you just don't really do that again. But sometimes you get really cool stuff out of it and end up making a bunch of dope shit. My favorite thing is like leaving the studio and it's just like, damn, I made some dope shit today. That's like my favorite feeling in the world. Yeah.